Okay, so welcome back. Uh, we will get uh, into now second video for the week 7 and uh, as we are focusing on green and alternative material. So, in this video the most of the focus will be looking at the biodegradable plastic which kind of we started looking uh, in the towards the end of the previous video. So, there are different types out there as you saw and uh, so some uh, are here we are looking at some starch based polymers. Uh, which is used uh, in uh, biodegradable plastic as well. So, as you can see in terms of different example, uh, there are some thermoplastic starch products, there are some starch uh, synthetic aliphatic uh, polyester blends. So, it is kind of mixture of uh, uh, synthetic uh, with polyester with a starch, a star with uh, PBS and PBSA polyester blend, a starch with PVOH blend and they are used in different applications or food packaging, disposable eating utensils, loose fill, anti, anti static and form protective packaging, compostable film and uh, retail and for uh, and tra trash bags for uh, uh, bags for trash used in retail as well as for agricultural application. Uh, synthetics uh, this uh, type uh, we have uh, high quality seats and packaging film. So, uh, here we have thermoformed biscuit trays or film products uh, for starch and PVOH blend, water soluble laundry bag, drug control release carriers, biomembrane, uh, loose field packaging. So, as you can see and there are some examples right here in terms of the different product. So, as you can see there are uh, there are there is so this uh, bioplastic uh, or uh, bio based plastic where part of uh, the plastic is uh, bio based not entire not 100 percent as this is a kind of a blend of uh, bio, bio, bio based as well as uh, you like a usual stuff like polyester and all. So, that is it is it, there are applications it is not and it is being used already it is being uh, uh, used all it is already being used, but since we use so much of plastic still there are several plastics are being uh, used uh, which are essentially just the uh, uh, fossil fuel based plastic, but there are alternatives are already been in the market and uh, some of them uh, the uh, with the plastic alternatives the uh, um, thing is that 100 percent biodegradable plastic is still not out there and for many of the applications that plastic is used 100 percent biodegradable plastic is not meeting the same strength and other requirements for that plastic. So, that is where uh, the research is needed to come up with uh, uh, bio based plastic which can hunt replace traditional plastic and do all the function as the traditional as uh, per traditional plastic does, which kind of sounds sometimes a little bit uh, uh, awkward because the whole reason why this fossil fuel based plastic is so popular because they are not biodegradable and they are uh, they can stay they can last for a long period of time. So, and now we are trying to make product which is biodegradable, but also do the function of uh, fossil similar function as fossil fuel based plastic. So, there is always, uh, but since the technology has improved the newer knowledge has come in we are trying to make something happen, but many of them are still in a blend stage where you have uh, both plastics blended together, but at least part of it is biodegradable. So, there is uh, some positive right there. Bio, so, there are biodegradable polyester uh, families also there. So, if you look at the polyester there are aliphatic and aromatic there are two different types of uh, uh, polyesters. So, in uh, aliphatic you have different types uh, PBS, PCL, PHA and all those uh, what they mean has been listed right here. So, uh, like a, for example, PBS it is a polybutyne succinate, uh, PCL which is uh, your poly Cap caprolacton and again uh, uh, those of you registered for exam or since all many all of you I hope that all of you are taking quiz and you should take quiz uh, uh, those of you who have registered for this course. So, uh, I am not we are not going to ask you that what is this what is that because that is uh, that will be a little bit unfair, 
to ask, but uh, I do not want to memorize all these abbreviations here, but uh, just with the, when you look at those uh, d, uh, the names, you kind of get an idea of what they are, because uh, they, the names are most of these organic names, you can get, guess how what kind of uh, structure that uh, uh, particular uh, 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 like a, a compound has and also uh, what 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 could be in there. So, those things uh, can be guessed based on that. PHA which is the polyhydroxyl uh, uh, hydroxyl can, uh, hydroxyl canoates. Now, PLA which is very popular polyactic acid which is used a lot and there are others uh, out there as well. So, similarly we have aromatic which has modified PET, AAC which is uh, aliphatic aromatic co copolyester, then PBAT and PB, PT MA, MAT which is polybutylene adaptive terephthalate, then polymethylene adipate terephthalate. So, there are. Uh, so, here the important thing is that uh, when you look at them uh, anything which is shown in uh, green box they are naturally produced, they are renewable. Uh, anything which is in the light blue box they are synthetic, but it is still renewable. Anything which is in that uh, pink or purple uh, color box, uh, pink slash purple, it is uh, non-renewable. And uh, this, uh, this came from there is an Australian report uh, by on biodegradable plastic done few years back. So it's uh, basically coming from that. And uh, as I said earlier, most of these uh, reading uh, reports, other stuff is uh, are made available on uh, as a reading material. So you can look at if you're interested, you can let look at it in more detail on uh, those reports as well. And since uh, even if it's say for some reason it's not there in the reading material, the details are there. You can Google it, and you will find those reports. Now, in terms of uh, biodegradable polyesters, uh, there are uh, uh, there are P, the different types of plastic. We have a PHA, which you saw. PHA is a naturally produced poly polyester. PHBH, which is not again a naturally produced. PLA is renewable resource polyester. PCL, which is synthetic aliphatic polyester. And there are different applications for them. It's a blow-in injection molded, multi-layer films, drink cups, takeaway food trays, containers and and boxes, food contact foam trays, loose fills and film bags. And if you do a uh, composting on them, excuse me, if you uh, look at the composting on them, it kind of goes from uh, around from 2 weeks to 10 weeks for the different types. So, uh, PHA uh, naturally produced polyester it takes 10 weeks uh, in uh, compost. Uh, PLA which is uh, 2 weeks uh, via hydrolysis. So, it is pretty uh, quickly PC all six, 6 weeks and PHBH can go for an under aerobic and anaerobic both conditions it can degrade. So, as you can see in the picture here this type of uh, like a PLA kind of plastic bottles. So, it will start degrading and then kind of goes and then finally it kind of crumbles up and makes uh, into smaller pieces. We need to make sure that these are smaller pieces when it goes it is really kind of degradable it does not create microplastic. If it creates microplastic then it uh, becomes a problem. So, we have to look at that aspect as well it should not create microplastics as we talked in the previous uh, uh, I think in the week 4 or week 5 uh, where we were looking at the health impact. So, microplastics had a lot of uh, uh, negative impact to the environment. So, we want to make sure that it does not create microplastics. Then there are some others uh, category as well PBS uh, which is uh, and then ASE copolyester modified PET and uh, there it is used for mulch film, packaging film, uh, you have uh, flushable hygiene product commercial food wrap, typical application of PET, modified PET is also used for that. So, again 8 weeks or 12 weeks uh, it uh, kind of uh, used uh, in those uh, uh, commercial. Uh, so, that those are used for those kind of uh, application. So, again uh, there are uh, there are biodegradable polymers out there which uh, is uh, used in different application as you can as you saw. Then there are some called water soluble polymers that PVOH you saw this earlier as well which is polyvinyl alcohol. It is readily biodegradable water soluble and uh, it can generally be utilized in a range of film application uh, as you can see on the right hand side like it is kind of a fin film application uh, does not biodegrade, but simply dissolves in water. Uh, it can be biodegraded by activated sludge treatment. So, it does bio it will dissolve in water 
and then you can use to put it in an industrial wastewater treatment plant or a wastewater treatment plant and if you like if you have a activated sludge treatment will take care of its uh, uh, like a degradation. Uh, water soluble polymers is also ethylene vinyl alcohol EVOH earlier we had PVOH this is EVOH which is again another water soluble used as an oxygen barrier layer in multi layer film packaging. So, many of these uh, film like uh, uh, when you look at uh, your uh, ketchup bottle, ketchup bottles and several other bottles where you have two layers of. So, essentially you have uh, two layers of plastics uh, and in between, uh, in between you have a third layer. So, this is your plastic layer, this is your plastic layer and now you have a third layer in between. Uh, which is uh, so if you can put it like this so this is the you can see in the middle the pen that we have that I have it's kind of symbolizes the third layer which is your ethylene vinyl alcohol layer so that's your uh, it's an it's a water soluble poly polymer and what it does it's not let the oxygen it uh, becomes a oxygen barrier layer so your uh, uh, whatever is the product inside that particular bottle it stays fresh for a longer period of time so it is a high this it is a little bit costly it is a high cost of EVOH is a significant barrier to its widespread use in other biodegradable plastic application, but it is uh, used as a oxygen barrier layer in uh, several containers. And there are some photo biodegradable plastic which will uh, degrade when they are exposed to sunlight. So, these are thermoplastic synthetic polymers uh, it is with a light sensitive uh, chemical additives. So, they have some light sensitive chemical uh, additives or copolymers they they for the pur purpose of this is to weakening the bonds in the presence of ultraviolet radiation. So, in the in when it is uh, exposed to sun exposed to UV rays it will uh, start uh, degrading. So, it is uh, they use uh, diketones uh, ferrocene derivatives like amino alcohol ferrocene or carbonyls containing species. And uh, again the effectiveness will de depend on the exposure intensity uh, vary with factors such as season, geography, dirt or water. Some places in the world we have higher UV content than the others. So, that also uh, will play a role. So, photodegradable plastic may be useful in application where littering is an issue. So, if it is uh, if it is if say people are not following the rule and we have a lot of littering of the plastic waste. So, if they are photo biodegradable uh, with the sunlight. Uh, over uh, some period of time it will degrade and it will go away. So, it will uh, it will kind of uh, threat to the animal and marine life will go down because it will uh, uh, degrade out based on uh, exposure to UV rays. Uh, then there are some uh, there are some plastic uh, additives uh, which is uh, pro degradant concentrates. So, they promote oxidation process uh, that break the plastic down into brittle or low molecular weight fragments. Then uh, microorganisms gobble up the fragments as they disintegrate turning them into carbon dioxide water and biomass. So, and then which reportedly contains no harmful residue. So, they go by uh, the trade name of TDPA which is totally degradable plastic additives. So, that is what it is called totally degradable plastic additives. And as the name suggests, it's uh, it's supposed to totally degrade. And when they are added to polyethylene at the level of around three percent, uh, PDCs uh, they can promote nearly complete degradation, like 95 percent of the plastic in bacteria-friendly uh, fragments within four weeks. Uh, they are not strictly biodegradable, but uh, they can uh, be said as uh, 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 bio erodible. So, they are eroded through biological process. So, they are not uh, tot like totally like a biodegradable as per the definition of biodegradability, but they are eroded through the bio uh, by the microorganism. So, it can be called as a bio erodible. Now, in their application they are used in thin plastic shopping bags. The manufacture single use plastic, disposable diapers, trash bags, landfill covers, food containers. So, that is where it uh, can help in degrading those plastic uh, quickly. So, that is uh, the point there. And there are a lot of uh, other uh, there are a lot of other uh, uh, food products, uh, there are a lot of other materials which are also coming up. So, there are some uh, edible, edible food packaging is also there which is made from milk protein. So, in this particular video I would like you to you see that uh, 
there are uh, some of the newer food packaging that is coming in uh, where uh, you uh, is actually coming from the milk pot protein and we are using it as a food packaging plastic uh, which is uh, kind of one of the polymers uh, that is being used so it again it's a bio based polymer it's a uh, like a degradable polymer and it, it can be eatable poly it's a basically you can eat those packaging so i'll, I'll let you watch this video that has an audio as well so i'll uh, uh, I'll keep quiet in this particular video, and then uh, you can just watch it. And after that, we will have a, uh, we'll discuss it. So I'll let's get started for you. These issues, scientists are now developing a biodegradable film made of milk proteins, and you can eat it to boot. Led by Peggy Tomasula, the team at the U.S. Department of Agriculture developed an environmentally friendly film made of the milk protein casein. These films are up to 500 times better than plastics at keeping oxygen away from food. And because they're derived from milk, they're biodegradable, sustainable, and edible. The researchers are presenting their work at the 252nd National Meeting of the American Chemical Society. Although the researchers' first attempt using pure casein resulted in a strong, effective oxygen blocker, it was relatively hard to handle and would dissolve in water too quickly. So they made a few improvements, adding citrus pectin into the blend to make the packaging even stronger and more resistant to humidity and high temperatures. The material has a number of unique applications. In addition to being used as plastic pouches and wraps, this casing coating could be sprayed onto food, such as cereal bars or flakes. Right now, cereals keep their crunch in milk due to a sugar coating. Instead of all that sugar, manufacturers could spray on casein protein coatings to prevent soggy cereal. Co-leader of the study, Leticia Bonai, says the team is currently testing applications such as single-serve edible food wrappers. Individual dried soup portions, or instant coffee wrapped in the film, can be added to hot water where the film readily dissolves, eliminating the packaging waste. Because single-serve pouches would need to stay sanitary on store shelves, they would have to be encased in a larger plastic or cardboard container to prevent them from getting wet or dirty. Tomasula and her team hope that So as you saw, it's uh, uh, it was like uh, it's mostly like uh, based on milk protein, and you saw that uh, how easily it was uh, de uh, like de got dissolved, and then it can be uh, like degraded. It's uh, most and you saw one gentleman, uh, one uh, like a boy eating one of those uh, uh, plastic as well. So there are there are products out there which is uh, claiming uh, to be uh, eatable food packaging there is also uh, some uh, uh, cutlery sets are coming up uh, where cutlery sets even plates plates are coming up which is uh, eatable plates so you eat some uh, you take a snacks and after that you eat the plate itself so those uh, products are also coming up mostly we see from the european market those things are being showing up so this is a uh, uh, becoming, uh, uh, I'd say, it's 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 those are uh, becoming a little bit popular. They are not in a big scale is still, but it is becoming popular in terms of uh, uh, like an alternative to plastic packaging, alternative to plastic, uh, especially in uh, food uh, and related uh, sector where uh, you can use these as part of because you can eat that too. So, you can eat uh, whatever is the food inside, uh, but at the same time you can eat the package <laughs> packaging as well. So, that would that is like a, it looks cool as uh, too. So, uh, going a little bit further, uh, there was a uh, uh, some uh, like a in terms of uh, some of the uh, uh, like a leather kind of stuff. This is one company in uh, Milan, Italy. Uh, it's uh, which is uh, uh, like a, a Veggia, if I, if I'm uh, spelling it correctly, because maybe it's Italian name. It specializes in creation of cruelty-free leather. As you know, leather is uh, uh, it's it, most of the leather is coming from animal uh, bodies. So your leather shoes or uh, leather bags or leather purse or leather jacket. They all coming from some animal. So here they are looking at uh, try to make entirely this uh, leather uh, from grapes. So you can use grapes, uh, which is entirely made from grapes. So that's uh, uh, you can use grapes to make leather. The company has was founded just uh, like more than just more than two years ago in 2016 after uh, began to study the physical and mechanical properties of various plant fibers and their ability to be transformed in eco friendly material. So, he went uh, he, he, his research uh, made something what is called wine leather. 
So, because as you know grapes uh, it is a wine. Uh, uh, so, it is realized that grape skins, stalks and seeds were ideal for creating a sturdy and real filling vegan leather. So, you, know, you have now vegan leather. So, and then um, there are other, uh, so that is uh, uh, they are using uh, uh, grapes to make uh, uh, as uh, eco friendly leather, it is called wine leather because it is coming from the wineries with the grape skin, uh, stalks and as well as seeds. Then another one is the green banana paper, uh, a startup from uh, uh, Micronesia created a cruelty free leather made from banana fiber and another startup Myco works is making leather from mushrooms and pine pineapple is also getting into the cruelty free leather fun. So, there are a lot of uh, as long as we use uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, waste product from these it is ok. But uh, if we say if we start using using banana as a uh, fruit banana and trying to use it for this then we are competing with food sources. We need to eat the first uh, preference is to eat the banana not to make leather out of that, but we are not using the banana fruit here it is actually the banana uh, it is from the banana fiber. So, it is uh, you can take uh, uh, from the from the kind of uh, banana skin and other things from the banana plants that can be used for uh, uh, making those leather. So, that is that is fine that can be it is uh, it is like a good uh, uh, initiative. So, there are a lot of things are happening in the world and uh, these are some examples again as I keep on telling you there is not a standard uh, textbook on this particular course. Uh, there is uh, this is a there is a no uh, this is a brand new course. So, that is why he, we have tried to put together a lot of information from different sources and we are discussing those we are presenting it to you we are just telling you what it is we are not we are not here to make any opinion about one versus the other. These are the facts and you can make your own opinion which one is good or which one is bad. We are showing you pros and cons of everything and, uh, and of course, uh, it the one of the major goal of it is to make you aware of plastic waste management issues alternatives to plastic. So, that we can as a society we can make a decision of how to manage this plastic waste and what are the alternatives that can be used. So, now another uh, use that is uh, chicken uh, many may like a chicken is one of the staple food now in everywhere in the world you find a lot of chicken uh, being used a huge poultry, poultry industry around the world. So, the chicken feathers uh, that is can be a Spanish company is uh, using uh, is looking to use chicken feathers as a form of plastic uh, to use uh, that is that is sounds again pretty uh, uh, cool. Uh, so, it is a uh, and they said it will be a strong plastic most of the waste uh, for the chicken feather is a profitable material uh, due to its high keratin content. Uh, feathers are likely to produce plastic that is stronger and more tear resistant compared to those using modified starch or plant proteins for example. So, it will be a better than other bio based uh, uh, plastic. So, and uh, so they have a project uh, karma 2020 which is looking to how to transform unwanted feathers into biodegradable plastic how. So, there are challenges of course, to use the raw material. Uh, they have also created samples of feather based material could be used for packaging using a process where a heated material is injected into mold and shape it. Then they are working on a scaling up. So, there is some research going on uh, also looking how to make food packaging from feather and also uh, other applications like uh, slow release of fertilizers, compostable composite materials, flame retardant coatings. So, they are looking at economic technical feasibility of all that. So, that is another uh, some interesting stuff going on. Again as I keep on telling you if you find some interesting stuff I, I strongly encourage you to go on Google and uh, search for all these different topics because this field is so dynamic. Uh, the moment we set uh, put together the slides there might be some more reports out there which we may have uh, missed it. We are also trying to keep an eye on that, but if you find something new please post it on the discussion forum. It will be helpful for each one of us including uh, our, uh, our like team our, like my team including myself which uh, who are working on uh, putting together who worked on put together on this particular course. So, chicken feathers uh, from there to plastic uh, we looked at uh, uh, grapes skin to plastic. Uh, banana fibers to plastic even pineapples mushrooms to plastic. So, there are lots of things are uh, going on. 
uh, mushroom roots uh, with uh, my mycelium mushroom roots funnily uh, it the same stuff that uh, coron is made from a uh, packaging is literally grown uh, it's a eco innovative design uh, gather agricultural waste mix it with the uh, uh, mycelium in molds and then the packaging quite uh, literally grows so you can make pack packaging uh, product uh, uh, from uh, mushroom roots so that is also uh, being uh, looked into so you can uh, agricultural waste uh, and then you put uh, mycelium and then you get after a few days of growth mushroom products are ready to be used so it's we work uh, here they work with the regional farmers to source our non food agricultural waste which is sorted grouted uh, sorted ground and clean before growing then you have mycelium the vegetative root structure of a mushroom is added to the mix uh, and and uh, binds the agricultural waste together uh, which essentially mycelium is like a nature's glue and then uh, you have mushroom materials which can be molded into different products so that's uh, uh, is also uh, it's getting popular so in terms of mushroom material the growth trays are made of pet plastic which is reusable and recyclable they created uh, thermo forming over a solid form you can uh, precisely mill by a cnc router uh, to create a mold molded shape the growth trays are then filled uh, with a mix of substrate which is hemp nutrition flower mycelium which are sealed to grow for 6 days total after 4 days uh, pop parts out of the mold and let them grow for another days to get a velvety layer of overgrowth the final stage is to dry uh, parts uh, dry the plant parts to prevent future growth so that's uh, where you make this mushroom materials application of mushroom materials as you can see in different uh, things as a packaging material as uh, uh, we can use as uh, protection uh, for uh, uh, like break breakage so those uh, material can be used rather than using the styrofoam uh, these materials can be used which are essentially biodegradable so they look uh, uh, very much uh, uh, similar to styrofoam which we used quite a bit any packaging lot of styrofoams but then they don't degrade when they burn they create a lot of uh, air pollution issues so rather than this material which we much uh, is environmental friendly can biodegrade and those issues are not there as well so as you can see lot of packaging has been done especially uh, is well for medicines also for uh, this is your canadian maple syrup which is very popular in canada uh, so and then you can use it for other applications as well like candles and all those kind of stuff anything breakable you can just put a packaging around it then uh, bagasse uh, which is uh, sugarcane after the sugarcane juice again very popular we see a lot of that in india uh, especially during the summer months uh, and during uh, uh, summer when the after we get this uh, sugarcane starts coming in uh, in in the winter towards the end of after diwali diwali is when you first see like a great new uh, new produce of sugarcane and then since then up to all the way up to the summer vacation sugarcane is available during the summer vacation as well and every time you drink a glass of uh, uh, sugarcane juice you see all those pulp that is coming out and then they are just kept there many times they are just dumped somewhere but i see in uh, in the city of kharagpur in the town of kharagpur we see that getting dumped some places it can be dried they have good calorific value and can be used as a energy source as well but most of the uh, most of the time it is just dumped uh, on a side of the road or maybe in a landfill so here uh, they have usually 40 to 60% cellulose 20 to 30% hemicellulose about 20% lignin so it's a mostly cellulose and hemicellulose and uh, they produce a high amount of sugar like brazil vietnam china thailand also in india we see a lot of uh, bagasse and uh, bagasse is so called a by product many people see as a waste product uh, because in the past bagasse were mainly used as a fuel for the production plant so now with uh, uh, that not used that much for the fuel it's considered as a waste but it's not waste because it can be used uh, for different application so as a by product of sugar production bagasse does not require additional cultivation area so there is no impact on forest it is used for production of building materials packaging material and disposable table uh, tableware the paper industry has also started to use uh, replace wood fibers with sugarcane fibers to produce napkins toilet paper and cardboards so that's where the bagasse sugarcane is being used so uh this is uh, in uh, in in uh, it's being uh, converted into several uh, packaging material this is uh, so here as you can see uh, this eco friendly containers made from sugarcane or as is stronger than are stronger than plastic 
So, cutlery cups uh, and plates uh, that want in. So, here uh, in it, this is coming from our own country. So, in uh, it, in India, uh, many startups are finding alternatives to plastic. So, bagasse is being used uh, in uh, in terms of uh, extracting sugar. After extracting the sugar cane juice, can be used to make disposable cutleries and container. Papco is a greenware manufacturer is tapping into this market and uh, creating awareness with good results. So, as you can see all sorts of things that we use like fork, spoon, different types of a spoon, even uh, uh, your uh, uh, knife, uh, different packaging, your plates, different sizes of plates, different types, different size and shapes of containers. So, it is pretty much everything that you will use for your uh, uh, kind of uh, packaging material including uh, this uh, multi uh, uh, like a plate with uh, um, so, so many div divisions. So, you can put different food items at different places this is very popular plate uh, used in many places. So, this this kind of things are also can be used made from back as. So, it is a it is a biodegradable material as it says for really 40 percent cellulose, 20 percent hemicellulose and 20 percent lignin uh, 40 to 60 percent then around 20 percent lignin rest is hemicellulose. So, it is uh, it uh, it it's can biodegrade uh, by of course, lignin will be a little bit hard, but other than lignin things does uh, cellulose and hemicellulose do biodegrade quite easily. So, it it can be it can be used uh, uh, for all these different applications. So, that is really uh, rather than sending it to the landfill. So, whenever we do this kind of stuff it is not only uh, we are using a waste material uh, and make a product, it also that we are preventing that waste material from going to a dump site or a landfill. So, that also helps from a land, landfill management point of view, landfill space point of view and uh, the amount of uh, methane gas that could have generated because of this at that landfill site. So, all there is a there is a benefit uh, everywhere. So, in terms of production uh, you will have uh, this is the they are talking about a steam boiler, air compressor, you have a sugar cane pulp uh, going for hydraulic pumping, uh, then we have pulp mixing, we have forming machine, final shaping machine, edge cutting, UV sterilization and then you have a final product which you just saw in the previous uh, uh, video uh, sorry previous slide where uh, oops sorry. So, where uh, this was uh, being uh, different plates and other stuff that is being made from this bag as products. So, production steps uh, as you saw pulping, forming, pulping is a scalping the pulp paper board and put it into hydraulic pulper. After pulping pulp will go into the mixture tank and add water and oil additives then uh, goes to pulp supply tub and forming machine uh, vacuum dewatering. So, let us uh, uh, since we will we will go into this detail into the next video. Uh, because uh, we will go into each one of them is a little bit in detail. So, let us stop here for this particular video. So, what we have been looking at so far is uh, different types of uh, uh, biodegradable plastic uh, bi like a bioplastic, biodegradable plastic. We saw that uh, there are so many ventures are coming out uh, in uh, across the world including in India where people are looking at different types of uh, 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 waste product which is a biodegradable waste product and try to make materials similar to plastic and which can make those uh, product which can be used instead of using that those single use plastic product. So, that is always uh, better because these are uh, going to uh, like uh, help uh, in into the in terms of environmental performance. So, so that is uh, uh, will uh, that is what the whole uh, essence of this particular week is looking at greener material alternative to plastic. So, many are out there uh, since these are newer products uh, they economically they are uh, most of them are costlier than plus the, the single use plastic because single use plastic the whole industry has matured quite a bit. So, there is uh, uh, there is they, they, can, they have lower prices the prices have gone down uh, on uh, on regular plastic products. The alternatives it takes time where once the volume goes up for them and also the initial cost in terms of the research and sub setting up of the plant uh, that makes the cost of the product a bit higher on uh, right now. So, from a government point of view from a policy point of view what we should get is uh, we should get some sort of incentive to these companies 
uh, who are coming up with alternatives to traditional plastic uh, for the betterment of environment, they should get some sort of incentive from the government, whatever the government thinks is the proper to make these companies uh, kind of uh, viable, uh, economically viable uh, for, uh, for first uh, maybe a decade or so. Uh, so, that uh, they, they these products mature, the prices comes down and then they will be economically competitive. Otherwise, uh, uh, that is one way, other way is you put uh, legislation. So, you put a lot of uh, uh, fine on, uh, on the traditional plastic stuff, but again that is going to help only to put some money into the government, but that money has to be channeled to this uh, startups, to this uh, smaller company. So, that uh, they can we need to help them out, so to come up with uh, a newer product. Uh, safer product uh, which can be re can replace our traditional plastic. So, we will continue this discussion especially this uh, that uh, bag as uh, product will go in more detail uh, in the next video. So, again thank you uh, uh, for uh, uh, taking this course and I hope you are enjoying it. We are already kind of uh, in seventh week we are going towards the middle of seventh week in the next video and then after that only a week and a half will be left. So, uh, uh, I hope uh, it, it, it was a good decision for you to take this course and uh, again any constructive feedback, any concern uh, put it on the discussion forum uh, and uh, you should also be ready with your questions in uh, the live session uh, which, uh, which will, uh, is going to happen uh, in this course as well. So, thank you and see you again in the next video.